And now, ladies and gentlemen, here live at Bill Records, we'd like to thank Mr. Lee Powell. We're going to talk a little bit on this 4th of July weekend about Texas history. What are you going to tell us we don't know today, Lee? I hope something that you don't know. <laughs> now, this is a 4th of July weekend. This is a very significant 4th of July weekend because it is the 100th anniversary of a symbol of four words that ignited controversy, inspiration to some, degradation to others 100 years ago. And it has continued off and on through most of this century. Now these four words, there are young people here today, so I hope this will be for, very educational. <laughs> but these four words, I'm going to say what they are, I'm going to spell out what they meant 100 years ago, what they have meant since, and on down the road. Here we go. These four words that celebrate their 100th birthday officially. Tomorrow, July 4th, 2010, it occurred in Reno, Nevada, July 4th, 1910. These four words. The Great White Hope. Are you going to spell them out? I'll spell them out if you want me to. T-H-E. They, they all sound similar to other words. For example, the last word. The last word sounds like I'm talking about uh, the great white hope. The first two letters that rhyme with uh, Don Ho's last name. There's a lady over here, the sons of Herman. Her name is Joe Nicodemus. And if she had married Don Ho back in his prime, her prime, she'd have an easy time signing paychecks. Because she'd married Don Ho, her name would be Joe Ho. <laughs> Tell her look it on YouTube. She can see it. She'll get her whole family to watch it and have to the viewers. All right. The Great White Hope. G-R-E-A-T. W-H-I-T-E. H-O-P-E. Hope. As in hope and change. You heard of hope and change, haven't you? Little Arthur. 
He grew up to be a pretty large man for those times. He weighed about 185 pounds by the time he arrived in adulthood. He worked on the ship docks down there in Galveston, and he learned he could make easy money by getting into a kind of a squared circle with some white men and throwing punches at them, while at the same time dodging punches coming back at him. He learned that there were a lot of people, this was a racist nation now back then, that people wanted to see these black folks get knocked out. But they were disappointed because Jack Johnson was his name. He was doing the opposite. Still, he learned that as he would spar and fight with these guys, that the winner had a bunch of money thrown at him. So this is some good part-time change for young John, Arthur Johnson. He eventually turned pro, if you want to call it that, in 1895, and he bought docks from here and there and here and there and around the country in different places. Uh, in 1900, very significant historical event in Galveston, Texas, a great hurricane of 1900 occurred, which pretty much drove everything out of Galveston, including Jack Johnson, who was about to get thrown out anyway, because boxing was illegal in Texas at that time, and every time he would go to these little sparring matches, he'd get thrown in jail. So a combination of getting thrown in jail, and when the hurricane blew the jail down, he says, God is telling us something, it's time for me to move on. So once again, here was a case of someone who, his initials were J.J. Some four decades later, another young girl whose initials were J.J. also left that part of the country. They go for there you go for go to California. Go to California. Her name was Janice Joplin. Jack Johnson did it first. He went to California right after uh, he decided the jail was about to get blown down in the hurricane, and he continued this futuristic pursuit. In 1903, the year was 1903, February 3rd, 1903. 65 years before Jerry Quarry scored a 12 round knockout over Thad Spencer in San Francisco, California, in Los Angeles, California. Yeah, in Los Angeles, California. Jack Johnson became the world's heavyweight champion by knocking out a man named ooh, Joe Jeanette was his name. Actually, that wasn't his name. His name slipped my mind. <laughs> We need to get you some ginkgo. <laughs> oh, <laughs> what I have is I do not have a telephone. Like somebody, people who get the phone with the microphone. I do, not I do not have a telephone. I have to go straight off my memory. 